So you may be at the moment uh, redundant looking for work. You may be looking for exactly the same type of job in a different industry. Maybe the industry that you're currently in is an industry that's been heavily hit by the coronavirus and maybe you're needing to start thinking about how you could transfer your skills into something that's maybe a bit different and we'll talk about that a bit more as we go along. Um, maybe you are actually thinking about making some kind of a, a change. So whichever space you're in, whether you're looking for something the same but in a different company, you're looking for something slightly different or you're looking to make a complete change a really great place to start and to start taking control is to carry out a skills audit of yourself so to identify those skills that you've got the things that you do naturally really well because once you've got that on paper it becomes much easier to see how many transferable skills you've actually got because the number of people i chat to who don't believe the skills they've got are gonna transfer anywhere other than what they've always done. So a classic example, last night I was chatting to a lady who worked in retail, who wants to move into something else. And I asked her what she felt her top three skills were. And she said, well, it's retail. But actually you dig under the surface of retail and you'll find someone who's got great communication skills, who can deal with the public, who can problem solve, who's calm under pressure. So. It's about digging down um, under those kind of top level skills to what is at the core of what makes you and actually what you enjoy doing as well, because sometimes we can be great at things that we don't actually enjoy very much. So a really simple skills audit, take two pieces of paper, um, on one piece of paper, write down the skills that you've got that you love to use. So that could be things like organizing or solving problems or writing, planning, researching, whatever it might be. You know, don't think too much about it when you're doing this, just see what comes out kind of on as you're, as you're writing them. So paper one, skills that you actually love using. On the second piece of paper, write the skills that you've got that maybe you don't enjoy quite as much, but you actually know you're pretty good at them. So maybe using Excel or maybe proofreading or presenting. So maybe you don't enjoy that as much, but you know you can do it if you have to. And make sure you're including skills from all areas of your life. So not just work, but think about much more widely because there are often lots of things we do outside of work or if we're not working or have had a break, that are absolutely valid. Skills don't only have to come from our jobs. They can come from any element of our life. Um, and then you should have a nice couple of lists there. If you struggle, if you think, I, I just don't know what I'm good at, go and ask some friends, go and ask some family what they think you do really well. Um, and that in itself is a really nice confidence boost, actually, to hearing what other people think you do well. Um, but that, that's a top tip. So if you find you're struggling thinking about what you're good at, then go and ask some of your friends or, or family what, that, what they think. And when you've got your two lists, just have a look back over them and then ask yourself what those skills say about you. So let's say you've got researching on your list of skills that you really enjoy. Now that's probably saying that actually you've got quite good attention to detail. If you've got writing on your list as a, a skill, maybe that's saying that actually you're pretty creative. So you've got a kind of a high level skill, but actually there are probably other skills underneath that as well. So just spend a little bit of time reflecting on those skills that you've got and what they say about you and add those things to your lists as well. And then have a look at them and think about when those skills have actually made a difference. So when have you fixed something using your problem solving skills and actually think of that specific example. When have you, Organize. If organising is one of your skills, when have you organised a great event or party? When have you won an award or got some really great feedback as a direct result of your skills? So think about how you've actually used your skills in practice. And then go over your skills and just put a star next to any of those skills that you use when you get into flow. And when you get into flow is when you're doing something, when time just disappears, 
and you're kind of totally absorbed in that task or activity and before you know it you look up and two hours have gone by so be really clear about what those skills are that get you into flow um, so you might want to pick this up and kind of come back to it over the course of a few days as you you think of, of new things to add but it's really worth spending some time on this exercise whether you know exactly what you're looking for in terms of your next job this will be great for helping you to revamp your CV because you'll be really clear on what skills you've got that are going to transfer into the job that you're looking for but if you're looking for something slightly different or you're needing to think about how you can use your skills in a slightly different way, then again, this is a great springboard where you can then start to think, OK, look at all of these skills that I've got. You know, what kind of businesses are going to be looking for someone who has got great organising skills, problem solving skills, who's a great communicator? And actually, the answer will probably be quite a lot. Of industries so you don't have to pigeon your pigeonhole yourself and just because you've always done one thing it doesn't mean you can't transfer those skills into something else and it may be as a result so, so, um, so if people at the moment who've lost their jobs may panic and just jump on the first jobs that they come across but you don't think that's the right thing to do we should just take a bit of stock a bit of time to reflect as you know as much as we can because everyone has pressures on economic pressures on them absolutely a bit of time to evaluate where they are in life, what they really want, what competencies and capabilities that they have that lend themselves to, and then and then work out the job role. Is that right? Yeah, and I think that process doesn't have to take very long. You could do it in you know an hour um, yes. if, if you wanted to. Um, oh. But I think it, it's well worth doing that. And there's always a danger, and I totally get that sometimes a job. You know, any job is the is the top priority whatever it is I need to get some money in next month and if that's the top priority then that's absolutely the right thing to do but there's no reason why you couldn't go through this process you've secured that I need to pay my rent next month job but actually I am going to have a little think about kind of what might be next for me you know and, and just spend a little bit of time reflecting on your skills and strengths um, so you know the next job actually might be something that might be better suited for you yeah. um, and, and that's part of being kind to yourself as well isn't yeah, it sure yeah, yeah. Mm. but there's um there's something called a rebound job um as well a bit like when you you break up from someone there's a danger that you can rebound into a, a relationship that might not be very good for you yes. there's yeah. rebound jobs as well so you can kind of bounce from something into something else that actually isn't good for you so you don't and as I say I totally get the, the pressure um, you know I've been there myself and you know sometimes it is all about getting the money in the door but just be careful that you're not going to put yourself into a situation that really isn't going to be right for you and that in a few weeks time you're going to be looking for something something else so um, just spending a little bit of time beforehand I think is, is useful so you're not making that decision from that place of of, of panic that you yeah. really are thinking, yes, this is the right thing for me right now. And I'll think about what's next.